Hello everybody. Uh, now I'll try to discuss the another uh, processing technique of the thermoplastic material. So this is called the injection molding. So we can see this is a very common method and one of the widely used metal for the processing of the uh, thermoplastics. So injection molding we can use mostly for the mass production of the uh, parts for the plastic component. And but in principle. I already discussed the injection molding, the basic steps in principle are the same associated to the extrusion process, but there is a minor difference, I will discuss that part. But in general, in this more than one third of the thermoplastics are injection molded, then you can understand the importance of this particular process for the processing of the thermoplastics. But this process is more close to the equivalent to the similar to the hot chamber die casting process. So, but the principle of the injection molding is very simple. Uh, we create first we create the plastic material, we can we heated the plastic material until it reaches some the, the liquid state. So, it is we reach we, uh, wait up to the reaching to the viscous melt. So, on it is done then it is forced injecting uh, into the mold cavity. So, into the mold cavity. So, then uh, until uh, we follow the, we, tr we try to inject it into the mold cavity until it feel completely fill the mold cavity. Once it is filled the mold cavity, then we follow uh, this uh, cooling process and after cooling it is converted to it when it is becomes uh, it becomes a solid and then once it is solid we can take out the component from the system or from the unit. So, therefore, these are the steps and we can say that wide variety of the component shape uh, uh, different particular shape can be produced using this uh, injection molding process. Even thin wall it is manufacturing for the thin wall plastic part the shape can be different it can be uh, the it can be sheet it can be of the some close shape can be possible using this injection molding operations. So, let us look how it works. So, we see the similar kind of the we use that the hopper feeder. So, raw material is feeding here to collect the material from the in the hopper and from the hopper it is processed through the the screw uh, in injection molding it is a rotating screw we can utilize this thing and outside of the barrel we use the heated heating elements and but in near to this thing uh, instead of the putting in the die here we can see the we inject the liquid metal in the mold cavity. So, we create the mold cavity here we see observe is the mold cavity and one side of the mold cavity is fixed basically the shape is fixed but other side it can be movable. So, it means that we can we can control the shape or the size of the mold cavity by just moving using this moving element. So, depending upon the requirement we can we can feel we can fix the movable flat end uh, such that it defies the size of the mold cavity and then once the molten uh, uh, in this case uh, the from the, uh, the, uh, the one side of the uh, extrude uh, on the screw we can supply the molten metal to the mold cavity. So, we see the units we can the hydraulic screw drive and the gearing is also there uh, in this cases just to maintain the gearing means just to maintain the different speed and a hydraulic screw which is application of the this this load uh, the or sustain the load during the road up because once it is rotating it is moving the material in one particular direction. So, always it will create some kind of the back pressure with this particular back pressure it will try to come out through uh, like a uh, injecting through a nozzle uh, to the mold cavity and uh, the mold cavity is already created already fixed beforehand and we, we can use using some clamping unit. So, that clamping unit is flexible enough just to accommodate the size of the mold cavity here. So, we see this part three different parts are there one is the injection part injection means just to before injecting to the liquid metal to the mold cavity and there is a mold that is the mold part is there in one particular machine. So, inject, injection is there mold part and the clamping part these are the three basic parts associated with the, the injection molding operation. Now, we see that how it works. So, plastic metal is in the form of a pellets or the granules is basically fed into the hopper or fed from the hopper into the heating chamber. We see there is a heating elements are also there. Then electric heaters or friction from the rotation both both electric heater temperature heat supply from the electric heater or the friction because of the rotating screw both are, are responsible for the generation of the heat and uh, transforming the uh, solid plastic component into the molten state. So, one it is the molten state then it is injected uh, to the mold cavity and the some of course, for the injection we need the some injection pressure also just to inject in the mold cavity. So, once the injection unit uh, consists of the P 
piston or the reciprocating screw or a hydraulic plunger all possible uh, are there because I can either we can use the reciprocating screw or we can use the piston the cylinder arrangement or we can use the simply hydraulic plunger also we can utilize any one we can utilize just to push the liquid polymer liquid metal into the mold cavity so we can use any kind of the arrangement in this case so definitely molten plastic under the it is has to be injected through the nozzle under the the high pressure so that some kind of the that's why sometimes we can use the hydraulic system also just to create the pressure and it will be able to inject through the nozzle into the die cavity so once it is injected in mold cavity but mold parts are basically uh, cooled uh, very quickly or sometimes you can you can introduce in within the mold also some cooling channels can be introduced such so that it alter it can maintain the uh, cooling rate or quickly it can be cooled now once it is cold once it is cooled then final components is take it from the mold uh, cavity and one can get some understanding idea that uh, this typical range for the injection molding the one cycle time is around 5 to 60 seconds so it means that it is a very fast process so that's why most widely used process uh, is the injection moldings almost one third of the components plastic components is manufactured by following the injection molding principle now if we compare between the extrusion versus injection molding so here you can see the extrusion molding is basically we can say that through the die we can produce the continuous deformation uh, continuous deformation through the die opening so continuous component we can we can produce uh, through the die opening so the length can be controlled uh, as per the requirement but uh, in principle you can say that there is a continuous component is produced through the die opening so that's why it is called the two dimensional product and of course we can see the uniform cross section components like the plastic parts such as the tubes seat and pipes can easily be produced using the uh, extrusion molding operations but injection molding it is not uh, exactly the continuous co the continuous like uh, extrusion molding process rather here we can we can we can produce the liquid polymer uh, liquid thermoplastics with a similar fashion what we follow the extrusion process also but when you are placing this thing uh, to, the, to the mold cavity but here we can create we can injecting the liquid metal into the mold cavity so once the injecting the mold cavity the one component is produced then we can go for the uh, next injection for the next part so that means we, we cannot say this is a continuous process this is a kind of discontinuous process but at the same time it's a very effective in creating very complex of course the component can be three dimensional in this case we say that because it entirely the component size is shape and size is entirely controlled by the uh, the size of the mold cavity that's why we can say it is a three it this process can produce the three dimensional product so of course very intricate details high quality surface finish we can expect from the injection uh, molding operation so we can go further explore the injection molding process so we see that in a uh, one injection molding machine there are the three components but weak steps typically consist of the several stages one is the clamping stage is there then we what a clamping uh, can be done we can hold the uh, this mold cavity mold cavity create then what a injection can be done to the mold cavity and how cooling is followed and after cooling phase what are the ejection of the how the 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 finished component transferred to the or collect it so these are the four steps associated with the injection molding operations one is the clamping means the two halves of the mold cavity are tightly closed together and usually one one half is fixed uh, with the unit and another part is the movable adjustable i can say that it can be adjustable also and of course the clamping also helps uh, uh, the clamping stage we uh, the, we need to careful that it should not have any kind of the leakage of the uh, molten plastic during the injection and during the cooling phase also so that's why it is very important steps associated with the uh, this uh, clamping uh, process so already mentioned that one one of is uh, fixed and another of is movable uh, in this stage now we go for the injection of the liquid metal uh, so here polymer metal is actually uh, fed into the mold cavity uh, using the uh, from the uh, through the using nozzle so once it is injected into the mold cavity definitely we need to create a high amount of the pressure just to inject the the liquid uh, metal into the mold cavity so in this case the injection process the but mold cavity but injection process 
fills the entire covet, in, entire cavity you know, for the uh, molten plastic. So, uh, in this stage, so it fills the entire cavity and the molten stage of the plastic and shaping it into the according to the contour of the mold. Definitely, it will following the steps, uh, the more important step associated with the injection molding. Now, usually when it is injected through the nozzle, uh, the, which is referred to as the short volume. So, what is the volume of the material is basically injected through the nozzle is the short volume. So, therefore, injection time can be estimated by the short volume or it depends on the this uh, injection power or and the pressure is applied uh, for this particular uh, process. So, that means we can estimate the short volume associated during the injection of the liquid metal into the mold cavity. Now, once it is done, injection steps is done, then we follow the cooling stage. Cooling stage is the once the mold cavity is filled within the completely filled with the uh, mold cavity with the liquid plastic, it starts to uh, cooling down, cooling stage, but cooling stage sometimes we can for, we can control the cooling stage by incorporating some kind of the cooling channel inside the within the mold itself. So, it can be either water channel or can be sometimes we can air channel can also be used uh, just to cool down of the uh, plastic uh, in this particular phase, cooling phase. Of course, cooling phase solidify I can say the curing to the liquid metal uh, uh, in this cases and of course, will allow to the return to the shape as per the shape of the uh, die cavity and of course, proper cooling is crucial uh, for the dimensional accuracy. I already mentioned this thing that it is very important during the cooling phase because the most of the, the polymeric material it is also having uh, some kind of the elastic recovery component is also there. So, this we have to take in care of that during the cooling phase what is the elastic recovery might happen because elastic recovery will influence the dimensional accuracy of the component. So, it is very important uh, during the uh, to control the cooling phase such to minimize the recovery and to get the desired shape uh, of the component. So, once it is done after cooling phase once it is the complete component is there then we can follow the ejection uh, steps in these cases. Uh, we use the mold either we can open the mold or if there is some ejector open the mold there is some ejector pins are there or we can do some other mechanism uh, just to push the cooled uh, plastic part which is out of the mold cavity and once it is done out remove from the molding machine we just simply collect it the, the final component which can be um, done uh, automatically it can be done either manually or automatically. So, complete system can be done manually or maybe semi automatic way or complete automatic system can be followed. So, definitely for a mass production we try to follow the uh, complete the automatic system uh, of the any kind of the injection uh, molding process. Now, if you try to understand better way the injection molding process there are di different types of the molding machines. One is the hand injection molding machine which is manually can be operated. One is the plunger type the injection molding machine and the reciprocating screw type injection molding machine. So, these are the three different types of the injection molding machine we will try to discuss in this uh, steps. Here you can see that hand injection molding machine. So, definitely we know the in injection molding there are four different elements are there. One is the heating system is there a plunger just to create the pressure or to uh, create the pressure on the molten metal such that it will try to uh, inject through the nozzle. So, therefore, a plunger is the part of this system apart from the healing, uh, heating cylinder. Next will be the nozzle through which the molten metal is injected and another is the mold through which the we can give the, uh, the shape and size of the as per the component. Now, if you see the, the rotating hand units is there. So, rotating hand units first we uh, using the plunger that actually push the all the molten plastic through the nozzle and uh, when it is entered the no, uh, through the nozzle enters to the mold cavity then we try to allow some kind of the cooling and solidification of the desired shape and uh, we see it is easily uh, can be just rotating by the hand which can apply the pressure the plunger then it is supply the liquid metal and of course before that we has to some heating element has to apply here just to heat the the um, heat heating the um, polymer material and convert it to the liquid phase is through the plunger inject it through the nozzle to the mold cavity and once is the mold cavity and the after after the this uh, cooling phase we can use use this hand tool 
rotate it and we just take out uh, this component from this machine. So, definitely this kind of the hand uh, injection molding machine usually small scale production system we can utilize this particular machines and and of course very even it uh, complex shape of the complex can be very simple or it can be complex it entirely depends on the die size and the typical components for example toy household item so that can easily be i think manufactured using the hand injection molding machines so of course it can also be used for the prototyping or research and development component to develop some kind of the prototype or r and d component also purpose we can utilize this and missing but cost is of course very low simply very simple and the lots of flexibility is there but flexibility depends on the uh, thus more flexibility brings depending upon the changing of the die system as per the requirement but of course limited in terms of the production capacity not much because it is a completely manual machines and of course not uh, it is a manual machine so it is limited in terms of the automation compared to the industrial machines available uh, in this particular uh, area so hand injection molding so here this is another type of the injection molding machine this is called the plunger type of the injection molding machines so here you see that uh, we can use the plunger here from the hopper collect the materials and the plunger is the basically creating the pressure of the liquid uh, this thing just to come out from the liquid here in the heating zone and the liquid uh, from the nozzle liquid metal will come out to the mold cavity and of course injecting pins also there after the cooling we can the active the injecting pins are active then we can remove the base uh, component so here the difference is the molten plastic is pushed by the piston into the mold cavity so here the, the using this piston so that's why it is called the uh, called the plunger injection uh, molding machines now this is another molding machine that is the reciprocating screw type injection molding machines and here you can see that uh, which is modern uh, reciprocating screw type is the most modern most advanced uh, injection molding machines so here you can see the movable platen is there just to adjust uh, in this case is to size of the die and then uh, mold plates are there fixed pattern is also there here you can see the fixed pattern then heater also there and we see the heater heating elements are also there and nozzle is there and rotating screw is there in this rotating and reciprocating it's a rotating and at the same time there is a reciprocating screw is there so reciprocate it will move uh, both rotational motion as the reciprocating motion so here we see that in principle it is same what way we can the overall you can look into the injection molding machine but only thing is that you can allow the the reciprocating uh, motion of this particular screw such that when there is a development of the back pressure is already back pressure is generated then we no need to further uh, produce some kind of the back pressure in that case some backward uh, rotation uh, movement can happen uh, for the screw just to accommodate or just to control the back pressure so or to a predetermined distance it can be just rotate it can move backward in the predetermined distance just to release the over uh, extra back pressure associated with this process it's basically the to control the for generation of the the back sufficient back pressure for this particular process now this movement uh, two things are there this movement controls the volume of the metal to be inje injected so that can be the movement backward it, it will try to uh, control the volume of the materials can be injected in, in this particular process I, and uh, once it is done the screw is then stop rotating that means when it is reaches that particular position the the screw is stop rotating and then once it is stop rotating then hydrodynamically pushed the forward hydrodynamically forcing the liquid metal injected into the cavity so i mean to say that all these things the different steps is the better way control using this particular type of the machines here there is a in there is that option is there so not necessary to continuously rotating the the screw just to inject the liquid metal so or not necessary to this thing so once the particular material volume has been created then you can release uh, this thing and we can move backward the screw uh, we can stop rotating and uh, of the screw and up to stop rotating then we apply the hydraulic pressure just to push the metal so this is one cycle is completed so to achieve one cycle 
and maybe cycle time is more controlled in this particular case as compared to the other type of the injection molding uh, machine. So, usually the pressure develop around 70 to 200 mega Pascal in this particular uh, in this particular injection uh, molding uh, machine. So, one of the important parameter of the injection molding machine is the L by D ratio. Uh, it means that what is the L by the flight length. So, of the length of the screw, flight length of the screw and ask what is the diameter of the screw, outside diameter of the screw. Here you can see the, you can the figure from figure, you can see there is a flight length or effective length. We can start from this point to that point. So, it is the flight length and diameter, the external diameter of the screw. So, this ratio is very important because this ratio is normally decides the, uh, normally L by E ratio in the injection molding is screw is the 20 is to 1. In that range, uh, of course, it can vary also from 18 is to 1 to 24 is to that can be varied. But thing is that when L by D ratio is the ratio generates more shear heat uniformly. So, shear heat uniformly if you want to generate uh, in that cases the L by D ratio should be in that range, uh, should be higher. So, that is why that is the main uh, that is the importance of this ratio which can be linked with the what is the shear heat rate generation uh, during this uh, the, uh, this uh, polymer this process? Now, uh, of course, L by D ratio also improve the homogeneity of the melt. So that means more homogeneous, more uniformly melting is also influenced by the L by D ratio. So it should be the value should be sufficiently high such that it will try to maintain that one is the uniform shear heating or uniform melting within this zone. Now, you can see the different zone, you can see that uh, different parts of this thing of the screw. Here you can see the metering part, the length of this around, around 25 percent is the metering part, the length of length and transition part is around 25 percent and feeding part is around 50 percent. So, over the total length 50 percent is utilized for the usually the 50 percent is for the feeding of the polymering material and all 25 percent of the is the transition zone, transition pin the it is basically partial heating to reach to the completely uh, melting stage and one the around one fourth is length of, of the screw is basically controlled for the metering operation. This is the standard variation or some deviation of the total length associated with the uh, the screw or in, in case of the injection molding operation. Now, you see that there are so many application of the injection molding operation. We can see the one by one application. One is the thin wall products, thin wall products some, such as the plastic bucket which is used in the uh, household. This is the product of the injection molding. It can be used the wide range of the consumer good. For example, the like uh, containers, like bottle caps, toy, kitchenware and the electronic enclosures all can be produced using the uh, induction, uh, injection molding operations apart from some medical devices also, syringe, surgical instrument, medical equipment, housings uh, all are can be manufactured by the injection molding. Due to its ability to produce the uh, sterile high quality parts is possible using the injection molding operation. So, so, so you see there is a wide range of the components products can be uh, uh, produced using the injection molding operation and this is most one of the most widely used the manufacturing technique uh, for the um, polymeric material using the polymeric material. So, even it can be used for the electronics industry for example, casing, housing, different connector uh, usually produced using the uh, injection molding uh, process because this process is having uh, lots of flexibility to accommodate uh, this thing depending upon the die design. So, the basically the shape size of the component or application of the different shape and size entirely depends on the uh, not die exactly depends on the mold cavity. So, here so what we can design the mold cavity uh, the shape depends on this thing and second part is the how fast we can produce this component. So, that means cycle time. So, it this it this injection molding cycle time is actually very low. So, that is why we can apply widely this particular manufacturing technique to produce the wide range of the component or all are mainly uh, of the thermoplastics part. Now, if you look into the advantage disadvantage of this particular component, we can see the advantage is the high production rate and uh, close tolerance to the small intricate, very small intricate parts can be produced using this particular process, very minimal wastage of the material 
and of course very complex geometry can also be produced in using the injection molding operations and of course the com complexity depends on the design of the die uh, sorry not die and design of the mold cavity but disadvantage is that sometimes the cooling cost becomes very high also high tooling cost initial setup cost is relatively high and sometimes undercut uh, can be formed sometimes some large amount of the undercut is usually formed associated with this uh, injection molding operation so of course even for having some disadvantages but it's a widely used the manufacturing techniques which is handles the uh, thermoplastic polymers here you can see some video also simulation not exactly simulation just to understand this process we can see this video how it works and uh, if you try to look into this video the so understand the uh, how what are the injection molding machines what is the typical nature of an in injection molding machine so this is the finished plastic part so very good accurate component can be produced using this uh, injection molding machine you see the uh, injection mold machine so here we can see this is the movable part is there we see the hopper the plastic component is coming from the hopper and you see the heating element it is showing the heating element so through inside the ext the rotating plastic uh, three zones plasticizing screw we see the metering zone transition zone and feeding zone so all these cases probably the the design and the screw uh, design can be different now it is rotating in unidirection one direction it is rotating so it is rotating due to rotating to clear the uh, liquid molten uh, polymeric material uh, you can see the we see this is the die uh, we can already save the die shape is there creating and we see now it is injecting the liquid through the nozzle creating the pressure here and it is filling the die cavity we see the die cavity now it is cooling so once it is cooling this would uh, create the space also inside this cooling so cooling is done now it is ejecting is done for the component then you go for the, the manufacturing for the next part so cooling phase following and then it's coming back the screw is coming back creating the space and then it is after cooling it is ejecting the component so again we can see the injection process happens we can create the high pressure just moving forward this screw helps to facilitate the injection of the liquid metal into the die cavity and, and then part is produced the in, in component is produced now we can get this is the the finished product uh, this type of finished product we can we can produce of course it depends on the die part so i think uh, i have tried to explain the injection molding which is applicable uh, for the, um, the different kind of the um, thermo uh, thermoplastic polymer and you can say the wide range of the component can be produced using the injection molding operation and quite reasonable time uh, by following and even we can see the very complex shapes relatively high to moderate size uh, component can also be produced using the injection molding operations so i think that's all uh, thank you very much for your kind attention Thank you.